everybody. Welcome to Cake Burger. My name is Steve. I'm Mike. And it's Tuesday, guys. You know what that means? Time to go over some news. Uh, we got a couple of stories. It started, I, you know, I thought I started Monday and I'm like, what a slow weekend. Nothing happened. There were a couple of dumb announcements, but um, and then after I kind of like, you know, like, you know, just some organizing, kind of like, okay, what can we bring to the table as far as the video uh, today goes? And there's actually kind of a handful of uh, not like, you know, mind blowing, like, you know, or, internet breaking uh like you know things but i mean some good things to talk about yeah we're, we're gonna go over them today i think uh uh mike you want to go first or you want me to go first uh, i'll go for us this time uh right. so uh some more spider-man 3 news uh you know i'm the guy that's gonna probably drop the spider-man 3 news out of all of us um well you have some spider-man news too but we'll we'll start off uh the movie i i see it but i, I kind of like I, I let it go just to say I, I know you're gonna pick it up after yeah <laughs> So, uh, Doctor Strange is going to be in Spider-Man 3. Um, that's cool. Uh, I think that's really cool because there's two Ditko uh, creations right now. Mm -hmm. And I love a Doctor Strange Spider-Man team up. But from, I, I already know what you're going to say right now. But the way they're approaching it, supposedly, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, it seems like they're either going to be doing a brand new day. That's, I, that, that's my own theory because, you know, oh. I, Peter Parker wants to uh dr strange to or i said you know everyone's memory of him and all blah 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 and then we got what we got from that um or a live action spider-verse movie um uh, yeah uh yeah literally all weekend all i've been hearing is uh on the internet and not just from those fake uh cancer sites um we got you know, this covered we got this covered in comic book news like everywhere but, in the area co cosmic book news you know yeah. right. oh cosmic okay sorry yeah, but Call literally all legit. weekend, whenever I went on Google, uh, whenever I went on Facebook, all I saw was Tom McGuire might be. There's rumors that Tom McGuire might be, um, you know, signing on Andrew Garfield. Uh, I married, you know, Kristen Dunst might be coming back for it. Um, I've heard the Kristen Dunst thing. I, I think the uh, Tom McGuire. I think people are just kind of like speculating at this point the Toby and Andrew thing. I yeah. think it's definitely a conversation. I think Kevin Feige is going to be having, but um, I don't know. So far, I think that's based literally on nothing but hearsay right now. Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of hearsay going along. I don't know if it's a lot of just really just hopeful wishes. Um, but hey, who knows? Uh, it would be great to have a live action Spider Verse movie. I mean. Um, it seems like that's what the fans want. Um, Sony needs a cheddar cheese, you know, especially with Microsoft buying uh, Bethesda and all that. I'd like to see Sony buy Rockstar, but hey, that's just me. That's yeah. Me. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know what, if, if it's true. Um, Doctor Strange being in there, he was either going to open up the multiverse before his own multiverse movie, or uh, is he's going to erase the world's memory of Peter Parker. See, I think that's, I mean, I don't know what, what movie this is supposed to be in. It's, I, I think it won't be, in, I don't know. Because the thing is, it just happened. We haven't even yeah. seen the after effects of him being outed right now. We haven't even seen a full movie with the after effects of him being yeah. outed right now. So I think we kind of just uh, like directly after Far From Home, because Doctor Strange comes up before Spider-Man 3, I think. Or it could be uh, I think Spider-Man is supposed to come out at the end of next year. So we'll see. Okay. Um, I think it might be too soon. Um, if they do it, I mean, like it, it wouldn't surprise me because they kind of wrap, wrap things up really quickly in uh, the Marvel universe anyway. Yeah. Um, to me, I, I I don't care about Spider Verse. I we have an animated Spider Verse movie. Mm -hmm. That's good enough for me. If you want to throw Andrew and Toby in there, um, Sony Animation is quite capable of doing the likeness of those guys and he have their voice. Or even, ha there. even have them come in and voice it too. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, if you want in the Doctor Strange movie or the Spider-Man 3 movie to have a quick flash of them, like you shoot flashes of realities and kind of like show like a quick scene of them fighting or whatever, even if, even if like what we talked about before, if they're going to pluck a sentence of six from each continuity, just kind of have them like in the middle of fighting Electro or in the middle of fighting like, you know, uh, Sandman or whatever. And that, that's good enough for me. I don't know. Well, I think it movie. might be at the end of the movie. I heard most of the rumors that I heard was that they were going to show up at the end. That's fine with me. So. I, I don't need a full movie with, with, with old drunk Tobey Maguire and like, you know, <laughs> that, that's, that's okay with me. Um, the thing that well, I, I feel like this would be a golden opportunity to introduce a live action Miles Morales. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's, a, that's a good chance to do it, especially in the MCU because you had, mm. we talked about before, you had that five year gap. The one thing you didn't mention right now, which I'm surprised you didn't mention, which made me, my eyes rolled all the way to the back of my head through my ass and back up the other way was when they said Dr. Strange would be acting as a mentor towards Peter Parker, 
which why the first of all, Spider-Man does not need a mentor. No, we've already done met several movies with that with, with with Tony Stark, which which I think all the MCU critics hated. All longtime yeah. Spider-Man fans didn't really agree. It was very divisive. And second of all, what the fuck is Doctor Strange going to teach science-based Peter Parker? I agree. So <laughs> I, I hope that's just a rumor, or I I rather be if Doctor Strange is going to be in, I'd rather be Brand New Day or Spider Verse. Yeah. At least with Tony, you guys, I've said it, we we talked about this on the previous podcast that I don't think Uncle Ben, I mean, uh, Tony Stark replaced Uncle Ben. I don't think he replaced his father. He's just a new father figure for him because Uncle Ben is dead. His father's dead. Stop. Please stop. <laughs> like the That's father just how I feel about father. it. Going through it myself. Uh, but again, it would make sense for him to look up to Peter Park, uh, Tony Stark, and to be a mentor, not Doctor Strange. It's just yeah, uh, and I mean it makes sense in that content, in, in this content, the MCU. But as someone who's read basically every issue of Spider Man, uh, save a, a few like you know, um, satellite titles, I've never known Spider Man to have daddy issues ever in the comics. Hmm. Not even in the, when he was a teenager, he never like you know pined over like you know oh, I never had a father figure in my life. It was only in for a few months during Civil War yeah. where where Sp- Peter Parker and Tony kind of buddied up and he was like, hey, like, you know, you're older than me and we share a lot of interests. Like, you know, to- like Reed Richards doesn't give me the time of day. You're kind of like a father figure to me, but I'm not going to invest too much into it. He's not going to like become like this big, like this big emotional bonds. I'm going to build upon them. Um, Cause the whole thing was sour anyway. So I kind of would have been a little more traumatizing, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I-, I don't know what the Marvel's like, you know, obsession is with the giving, like making Peter this kid who has daddy issues and needs somebody to guide him through, like, you know, his adventures. When the whole point of Spider Man is he's a solo character, he's a loner, yeah. the lone wolf. And I, I don't know, I, I don't like the past 20 years, like, you know, what Marvel's idea of what Spider Man should be <laughs> like lately. I mean, I, I, I think it's agree to disagree with us on how we feel about that, that Spider Man, because I don't know if I feel that way completely about it. I don't see it as uh, he needs Tony to, to teach him. It's more of a less, it's just. I don't know. I guess me growing up, I had a bunch of different father figures, so I can kind of relate to what he's going through. And yeah. Maybe I'm blind to it, to that part. I could be. I'm, I'm not going to deny it. Yeah. But I don't. I just don't see it as that deep of a, a connection. I mean, yeah. To me, I I just see it as like you know, like I have not since Tom Holland and Captain Spider-Man. I've not seen one like independent thinking, like capable Spider-Man. Like, like, I mean, like, you know, everything's been kind of like, you know, like done for him or like, you know, he's had the resources laid out for him. And like, I, I don't know, I, I'm not gonna get into a big tangent right now because I can go, honestly, I, I, this yeah. is like, you know, tweets and tweets and tweets <laughs> and like message board arguments uh, regarding MCU Spider-Man, which obviously you can kind of tell what side of the fence I'm on <laughs> when it comes to this. But uh, let's move on before before things get too heated. Um, Mike, you know the story right now. I, I, we'll circle back to Spider-Man right now. We have a little bit of Spider-Man news, but it doesn't really have to do with the movie, so we'll kind of go back to that later. Um, so uh, also great news for me, another fan favorite character of mine. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to start <laughs> opening March, which yes. made me really excited. I did see that. They, I, they, they, they got to change every every time they put that news out they have that same pose where he's kind of doing this they gotta yeah. change that 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 picture There's that's so the only more... footage they can use right now yeah so <laughs> many more pictures so many he's in three movies can you use some other image some yeah. of them just have him stroking his beard <laughs> or something like you know um i mean yes, i haven't heard much of plot or anything yet so um just the fact that they're you know gonna stop filming again made me excited in the yeah. band i mean i'm um, excited happiness excited <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll I'll lay it out there right now. Any 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 you McGregor news makes me excited in the pants. Uh, I'm a happily married man, but if if you McGregor approached me and said, "Hey, you want to start a whole new life together?" I'd be like, "I sacrifice it all." <laughs> it's that that share of only one can know. What can you say? He is, he is you know he oozes charisma, and I, I definitely have a type, and you McGregor is my type in another time. Even though know, I, I, I absolutely love, and I don't care how many thumbs down we get from this or how many negative comments we get from this, I absolutely loved the prequels. Oh. I know I, there was some weaknesses in it. I, 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 can, I can admit that. But through it all, regardless of how you feel about the prequels, he was definitely the best part of that whole trilogy. I, I, you know, the acting the acting's stupid. The dialogue is horrible. And the special effects look like a PS2 game. But yeah. You know what? They're fun. 
and like you know, I'm not gonna say it was perfect, but I I I enjoyed them, and they were, and they were like the the gone with the wind compared to the new prequels. The new, I, sorry, the new the new trilogy. I was just gonna say that I enjoyed them a hell of a lot more than these new movies. That's for sure. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, you you McGregor as Obi Wan, come on, man. Like, I mean. Granted, the guy does not age, but hurry up, Disney. I mean, like you know, the, 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 eventually the wall, this, this gonna, this, the stone's gonna crack eventually. You eventually, know? he's gonna look like old Obi Wan Kenobi. So let's get this shit going. And he does a little bit. He's kind of like oh, I forget the, the original actor's name play Obi Wan, sort of something. Um, but he is like, getting a little more reminiscent. He's getting a little long in the tooth. I mean, yeah. obviously he's not gray and all that, but he, he does have a little bit of likeness to it. So I'm, I'm not excited. I can't, I can't wait. Well, I, I did heard originally that this might only be one season, which kind of made me cry a little bit inside, but. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, what else you got, Mike? Um, so two uh, two more things, actually. We'll dip into the uh, video game world real quick here. Uh, so Sega teased two things, uh, possibly a Sonic Adventure 3 and possibly a Sega, Genesis, uh, Sega Dreamcast Mini. I, I did see it uh, really quickly. I, saw, I thought that was just some kind of fan-made thing. But, yeah, I did hear about the Sega Dreamcast Mini. They, they, um, they tweeted – some picture with three on his face, on Sonic's face. So yep. that can mean numerous things. But um Sonic Adventure 3, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm there for that. It's Dreamcast Mini. Uh, I, as much I love the they're more of like a novelty thing. I have all the Nintendo minis that came out, the uh, yeah. the, the NES, the Super Nintendo, and they're fun for a little while, but then like once they the same games were on the eShop pretty much for Switch, and it's like, well, I, I can just have them all in one thing. <laughs> You know? I mean, I might get it because no, it's no secret that I'm I'm a big Sega fan, and I think Sega Dreamcast is probably like my third, or that's probably my second favorite. I, I I love me some Dreamcast. I, I have very fond memories of playing uh, Sonic Battle Network. Is Battle Network is that what it is? Uh, uh something Sonic Battle where you fight Battle Adventure, like a Mario Party type uh, game. Yeah, p- playing that game and listening to me some Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I mean, I remember, I remember playing Resident Evil Code Veronica. I still play it because I have it. Yeah. Uh, the Marvel versus Capcom games, the Street Fighter games were great on there. And the great thing about like Sega Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn, if you had action replay, you could play the Japanese games on there. And most of my, especially my Saturn games, are all Japanese games because one, they're cheaper and they come with a case. But for me, I would get it maybe it just because I'm a fan. Yep. But then again, I haven't got the Game Gear minis because those are just playing silly. But uh, I'll give you a hot take right now. Dreamcast, better than GameCube, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things that Sega just gave up on, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they at were... At the time, was... people were all like, oh, because there was no DVD player. And this is when DVDs were kind of really, you know, the DVD player was really expensive and kind of, you know, a popular thing. But also GameCube didn't have it because their discs were like, you know, really small, so... Um, somehow Nintendo made it through because it's Nintendo never having a um, DVD player or Blu-ray player in any of their systems. But for some reason, for Sega, that that's I think that was one of the killing strokes. One of one of them, not all of them. Well, Nintendo, I, Sega. I've watched um, like documentaries on Sega and stuff like that, and they were financially they've always been kind of behind the eight ball, just kind of treading water, uh, except for like a brief time in like the mid nineties. Um, but I mean, Nintendo. If you've done any research on them, like on, on their finances. They basically could for like for twelve years could just could, they can stop what they're doing right now and hold production on everything and not come out with anything and for like twelve to fifteen years they have enough money where they just be flush and still make yeah. money for the next like half over half a decade or, de- or decade and a half. Well, um, the, the problem with Sega was is that they were at war with Nintendo and at war with themselves. Yeah, and, and I'm, I've been reading that console book, which is probably one of the best books I've read in, in God knows how long. Um, and the documentary is coming out on CBS All Access, of which I don't have. Go figure. But um, they, they were literally at war. Like Sega of America and Sega of Japan were at war with each other while trying to fight Nintendo. We, that, that's another whole rabbit hole we can go down for another fun-filled Friday night game night uh, episode. Absolutely. But, uh, I say Sega, yeah, I thanks, thanks for the that. memories. Yeah, <laughs> I was excited about doing a, having a definitely um, Sonic Adventure 3, because what else would it mean? Oh hell yeah! You know we already have Sonic Three and Knuckles, which is my favorite Sonic game. There's no really other three in the Sonic, you know, sequels uh, deck. So I, what else could it mean? 
I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not getting a Sega Dreamcast Mini, so I hope they um, they come out with a, a, a Switch uh, version of it one day. Because that's that's what I, that's the only thing I play really is Switch. Really, well, that's what Nintendo should do, Switch. One last thing: instead of doing like separate games called uh, Sega Ages, they should just do a Sega channel like Nintendo does. Of this oh game. yeah. Uh, a whole section. Should be a whole section. Like, yeah, should be a whole section of the eShop. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, cool. So what else you got, Mike? Anything else? And my last bit of the news is this was this kind of dropped today that uh, Disney is going to be mainly focusing on streaming. So I mean, with the times, it could be just until COVID's up with, but it it could very well mean that all the new movies are going to be coming out on. The streaming service. I see. I, I think. Would, go ahead. I would assume that because I'm not paying thirty dollars every time to see a new movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would assume that there's probably going to be an additional hundred dollars a year for all the movies that come out. You can watch them whenever you want. That would make sense to me. I, I would pay for that, especially um, when I knew the new Marvel movies were coming out. It's kind of hard to gauge what what the, what the revenue is for those because tr- for some reason no one's been be able to make as much money as Trolls did initially that Trolls World yeah. Tour movie, um, Mulan. I think it's kind of hard to tell because there was a lot of controversy going on with that movie, so it's kind of hard to tell how much that would have made if you didn't have the controversy following it. Oh, and plus they also said that they're going to be releasing for free in, in December, so you know I would I can just wait till December to watch a movie like that. Yeah. Um, I think, like we talked about before, I think what the, the what's going to happen right now. A lot of people are, are kind of assimilated to this whole COVID lifestyle right now, and even people who like you know, they, when you hear the movie theaters are open, they're like, oh, "Okay, cool, I'm still not going." Like they yeah. weren't even clean back before, like you know, the, the COVID happened. Um, I think what you're going to see right now is those big, big movies, those big Marvel movies, the ones that are supposed to make a billion dollars, will still be released in theaters. But you're going to see a lot of like you know, um, complimentary series to go along with it. Like right now, you have um, Doctor Strange two we talked about right now, but they say you also have to watch WandaVision to know what's going on and Loki to know what's going on in that movie. So I think you're going to see a lot of these series that are going to kind of like set up the movies, and so maybe like gone are the days where we have like four like four Marvel movies happening at once. I remember the one year there was like uh, Captain America, uh, Winter Soldier, Iron Man three. Uh, Thor 2 and like Guardians of the Galaxy all in one year. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're going to see that anymore. I think you'll see probably more like, you know, like a bunch of series coming out, setting up the uh, the movies if, during the summer, I think. Um, and that'd be the, the good thing to do because on, honestly, if COVID continues, you have like, you know, the, it, it kind of dying down during the summertime because of the hot weather and stuff like that. So yeah. who knows what's going to happen in the future? But I think it's a smart thing to do. I think um, if you look at a lot of the series right now, a lot of the content, like The Boys, and uh, another uh, show we're going to talk about. Um, a lot of people are kind of, I mean, they're, they're the big hits and they're making a lot of money and they're making a lot of waves. That's why I think like that's a good thing to do. Um, and you're getting great quality. You're not getting like crappy quality from any of these these yeah. streaming uh, shows. Like I just finished watching The Boys and it was it was phenomenal. Yeah, that, that, that's I mean, that, that is, budgets are huge for that, but it's still it's good enough. It's and definitely honestly, movie quality. I'll say that. I mean. Yeah, not not every movie is exploding it and there's blood gushing out of it. Oh not, yeah, not Quentin Tarantino, you know, cheesiness like, like real deal. It's yeah, it's a little gratuitous, but it's it it, it works in that world though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, not every like Avengers Endgame cost what like a billion dollars to make something like that. Not every movie has to cost that much. Not, and that I mean, you can kind of get into the discussion with Scorsese and Coppola and stuff like that. How those movies are kind of ruining cinema. Um, mm-hmm. I think if you have fewer of those movies, you have less of those complaints and you have more room for more of like the art house stuff and even just like, you know, smaller budget shows like uh, like Daredevil and The Boys and that kind of stuff. Um, well, you said it best that they, you know they're going to release the Avengers style movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially if, again, this is not me hoping this happens, but if they ever got, you know, Robert Downey Jr. back as Iron Man, you know they're going to be releasing out of the theaters to get as much money for their buck as they can. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, or, the, the, or, or any of the big three. If you get Cap- Chris Evans back, you know they're going to, Need to, you know, if he ever comes back, you know he's getting Robert Downey Jr. money. So You'll see a lot of that for, that foreplay, that setup, like you know, that's going to be on on the streaming services, and then the the money shot <laughs> it's going to be in the theaters. You know what I mean? Uh, like a lot of theaters already are like that. Uh, ask Pee Wee. <laughs> so, um, so that's all you get for news, Micah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I found throughout the weekend. We'll get to mine. My, my, mine's a little small potatoes compared to yours. Uh, um, 
a little lower budget. Uh, Ryan Otley, who, who we know, uh, uh, tweeted the other day that he's uh, leaving Amazing Spider-Man after 20 issues. Uh, there was no hard feelings. It wasn't like he like he go quick because he couldn't take it anymore or whatever. He just like you know you know what I've always wanted to work on Spider Man and I and I think I'm done right now. Um, I I lashed out a little bit. You saw the message. I, I did, said, but I was hurt. When I'm hurt, I lash out. So you know I, what? That you're not the only one. You're you're not the because a lot of people are giving him shit over it, which I think is unfair. I think I I, well, I, yeah, really, I wouldn't go online and say give him shit. I was just more you know to you guys because and then you calmed me down when he showed me the tri sentinel that he did. Yeah. See, that's the thing. You look at so he did. See, the thing is, the book he only went for two years. The book comes out twice, uh, twice a month. Mm-hmm. So he's done less than half of the run of Spider Man. Uh, he was supposed to be one or two artists, and you've had two other, three other artists actually: uh, Patrick Gleason, Mark Bagley, um, and there was somebody. Oh, Humor Ramos pitched in, and then you've had some like rando guys kind of filling in. So he's done. I understand the frustration because, especially since he's done like a hundred plus issues monthly of Invincible. Plus, well, I, I think that's like literally the only thing he wants to do is Invincible. And that's the thing too. Um, and that can kind of go with our next story. But I mean, if you if you kind of like look at while he was drawing Spider Man, the issues he did was great. For one thing, yeah. we mentioned before that Tri Sentinel one, um, the Gog one, the uh, the Master Planner one. All, all the issues he did were great. The covers were great, especially. And it felt covers. very very old school. And I and I bring this up a lot with the Spencer run, especially when Otley's on it. Is it if his stuff felt more post Clone Saga? Yep. And that, that's another favorite. Era. I, I think every era is favorite era for, me for Spider Man, but that's one that generally sticks out for me is the post Clone Saga and. It's just his it's screened of that with his artwork. It is, I th- see, the thing with Otley is, like, you look at... Uh, did you read uh, Invincible at all, Micah? I did until our good friend Patrick ruined it for me. He's a very, like, action, like, you know, big, huge, over-the-top, punching, blood and guts, like, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think Spider-Man was a good fit for him for those stories, but I don't think Nick Spencer is the right writer for him. As much as I love Nick Spencer as Spider-Man, I think he's doing a great job in Amazing Spider-Man. Um... um I don't think a heat stuff needs to fucking end. Yeah, yeah, he's a wrap up that. Up. <laughs> I wish, yeah, I wish uh, Otley would have stayed on for that, but I mean, whatever. Um, but I think, like you know, he needs somebody who's more like big action, almost like a Mark Millar type well, like, writer. He, he is doing another Marvel book or a miniseries. He, he says that. Um, I think he the thing with Otley, he's probably he's probably contract contractually obligated to do something else. Yeah. Um, he says he's in pre production for that, but. Um, I, I don't know if we'll say. I think if anything, it's be a mini series. I think you're right. Um, My guess it'll be a Hulk or Thor, something like that. Thor would be good, but he's a little cartoon. I think that's the thing. With he's 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 very like you know action packed and it's very cool, but he's not like. I don't know if I like him on Thor. I think what he should do. I think with the show coming out, he and Dan Slott should should re, uh, relaunch She Hulk. And just do like real over the top, like you know, villains like Stegron, Modok, uh, the Frightful Four, uh, Wrecking Crew, and just do like a, a twelve issue series of just like you know, like of She Hulk, and just like you know, punch crazy, have Squirrel Girl in there, Hellcat, all those guys, and just be a crazy, crazy, bonkers book. Yeah. Uh, well, like you said, Hulk, Hulk can be good too, but I don't know if they're going to deal with Hulk right now. If he's like he's immortal right now, he's kind of a horror book. I don't, it's weird because Otley can do some like you know, zombie stuff, some horror aspects, but I mean, I think he shines mostly with like, you know, like Michael Bay type action things, like, you know, yeah. and blood and guts, that kind of thing. Um, I remember those, when I first read Invincible, I got the first like six trades and I literally read it in one sitting. It is. A lot of people like, you know, that's the thing we'll talk about right now. Um, Ryan Otley, if, like, we, like I said before, when he was on Spider Man, but you go on his Instagram and Twitter, all he was posting was things about Invincible. Yep. You can tell he—you could tell it was clearly wasn't his idea to end the series. It was Robert Kirkman's, obviously, yeah. so he could move on. But that's his first love is Invincible, and um, and he used the word pre-production when he said he's going to, on his next project. Um, we just got a trailer for uh, the Invincible animated series that's coming on Amazon Prime. I think Ryan Otley is involved in that, and I think he's also um, there's going to be some kind of Invincible spinoff title coming out that he's going to be doing. Um, because that's obviously where his heart is invincible, and yeah. I don't think he. I don't think he's... That'd be great if if Cartman, uh, you know, let someone else take on the series instead of just doing a hundred plus issues and then calling it quits. It seems like he's Cartman's very protective of it of his properties. Like you know, I, I think you know, Walking Dead's all done. There's no more Walking Dead. No one else can write Walking Dead except him. Yep. You no. Know, um, I mean, even in the TV show, because they had a, a really crappy spinoff, but whatever 
But uh, The Walking Dead is ending next year, too. I yep. mean, the whole zombie thing has run its course for the most part, even though I love the current Marvel Zombies Resurrection. Which I'll that'd, be, that'd be a good book for, uh, that'd be a good for the book for most, that, That's only a miniseries. You yeah. know, it, it's not going to be something that's going to go on for 100 plus issues. You know, yeah. so. And, um, I, and I do like The Walking Dead. I did, but for me, it's like kind of run, run its course. That's the thing you mentioned like, with Otley, how he did so many issues. Uh, I, I think like a lot of people with the, with the show coming out, a lot of people are like, well, how can I get caught up on like, you know, Invincible? There's so many issues of it. For me, th- you breeze through them. If you read them, they're, they're very quick reads and you, and you can easily go through like, you know, like like 20 issues in a night. Like, well, like, you know, well, the, I'll explain how Patrick ruined it for me. He ruined it for me by saying, oh, every, every war balloon is like a paragraph. And then I, I, I read the latest issue. I'm like, fucking bad. And I think that's the, 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 again, Patrick, I know you're listening to this. I love you. But that's like the second series that you fucking ruined for me. The, the thing I like about Invincible, too, it's very, like, like just, like, a matter-of-fact, simple dialogue. It's, it's not, like, a lot of, like, you know, it's not deep. I mean, there are deep, like, you know, like, issues and, like, and, and themes. They, 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 I mean, obviously, like, you know, later on the se- mid-series and later on the series. But, I mean, it's very, like, you know, a, a matter-of-fact dialogue where he'll be fighting somebody and he's like, oh, I thought you were a bad guy. Well, no, I'm not a bad guy. Okay, cool. Let's be buddies. And that's the end of the issue, you know? And, and well, that, that, that's something that he could have kept going on in Vince Bull, you know? Yeah. It was basically I mean, images of Superman. So it's something that they could have kept bringing on, bringing on and, and doing more with. But to whatever reason why Kurtman does the way he does his things he's that was it you know i mean ollie could write his own series they wanted to so he's done others his own creator own stuff he's done like grizzly shark and this kind of stuff um mm-hmm. like grizzly shark's not that great but i mean uh the writing anyway but the art's great um but yeah i, so I, I think you're gonna see something with ollie with invincible i mean i don't know when his marvel project come out if it is maybe he'll, he'll be doing something with donny cates mm-hmm. uh something venom related maybe when ryan stegman moves on he'll maybe he'll take over uh venom with uh, donny cates if donny cates says that would be a sick thing they then do yeah um, as far as the Invincible goes, we saw the trailer for Invincible. Um, great cast. We saw uh, J.K. Simmons is doing uh, Omni Man's voice. Uh, not the voice I, I pictured while reading the comic, but he he's a pretty solid choice. I like that. We have Stephen Young doing um, uh, Invincible uh, from Walking Well, then Dead. again, remember with J.K. Simmons, he did play that psycho in uh, Psycho Band Teacher and, Whip, and Whiplash. I love that yeah. movie. <laughs> um, and I think, I think Jillian Anderson, I think, is playing Eve, I think. Uh, meow. <laughs> oh, that, was a, that was a horrible cat. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love me some Jillian Anderson. I, I know uh, Steve Penpe loves her, too. Um, she's a little older than Stephen Young, but I mean, whatever. I mean, this is a voice anyway. Um, look at the trailer. I think uh, we're, it looks great. Wait, wait, wait. Who was, who's playing? Jillian Anderson, Scully? No, playing uh, uh, the Invincible. Stephen Young, is that his name? Is he from Walking Dead? Yep. Hot damn, I'm watching it. <laughs> um, I love you, Glenn. <laughs> look, it, it looks great. And honestly, I think, um, you know, I mean, I, I think... The, it's Seth a cartoon. Rogen, I haven't seen the trailer. It's a cartoon, right? Yep. Okay. So Seth, Seth Rogen starting into like the go-to, uh, like, you know, non-Marvel DC property guy, which, uh, I mean, he, he's a producer on The Boys. He did The Preacher. Uh, and now he's doing this. Uh, honestly, he's I mean, like... Too. That, I was just gonna say that it gives me a little a little more optimism for the turtles because I mean as far yeah, as the- I, I love him as an actor he's a great actor he's hilarious but at first he's like I'm gonna do turtles I'm like see that's the thing my my only basis comparison was Sausage Party which I did not enjoy that movie at all I thought it was stupid and not funny um, but uh, so I was kind of like eh, I thought his career was kind of over after um, Neighbors and that, those kind of yeah. things like but he's kind of like, proven himself as a producer and a writer like really like you know. Does these black sheep type like you know like concepts? Uh, well, he uh, also did uh, the forward for the console war book. Oh, did and he? He's also helped producing one of the, one of the uh, documentaries they're doing about it. So I, a, yeah. a, a lot more fucked up sense of humor than I thought he did. And uh, him and his uh, t- uh, partner uh, Evan Goldberg. Um, well, he'll he did the this- forward for it too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking. At, it, gives me, it gives me a lot of hope for our turtles. Uh, I can't wait for Invincible. It looks like they're gonna be doing the first storyline, which I don't want to spoil too much. Which is basically what the uh, the uh, what this conflict between uh, Alex and his father um, happens, and uh, I don't want to spoil too much. But I think they're gonna be doing the first storyline pretty much, and uh, then we'll see what happens. I think it'll be a hit. Uh, it looks like good. It looks almost like the uh, old Spawn cartoon on HBO, which is very like it looks very much like Otley's art. That's why I think Otley's involved in it when he, when he talks yeah. about doing pre-production because it looks very 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 reminiscent of, of Otley's art, almost from page to page. Um, well, it wouldn't be the first time they had a, an artist kind of play a role in the, in the cartoon, like 
I remember the MTV Spider-Man one that was long lost on a lot of people. It was very Mark Bagley esque. Well, DC used to do. I remember when DC was doing those um, theatrical releases where they were doing like um, uh, Superman Public Enemy. And, and it was very. Um, but they they kind of took the art like, or All Star Superman where they were taking the artists' versions and kind of animating yeah. them that way, like Ed McGinnis and Frank Whitley. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, it looks great. I can't wait to see. It. I love Invincible. Can't wait to see it. Um, Seth Rogen and Amazon Prime are killing it lately with uh, yeah. this project. Um, speaking of movie news, the other thing we're going to talk about is. Um, uh, they showed some uh, some photos from the set of uh, the Batman movie. Um, I, I get some pictures in front of my face. I think, but they had uh, it looks like a funeral scene. Uh, it had um, Bruce Wayne, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. Selena Kyle, uh, Colin Farrell as Oswald Cobblepot, and uh, John Turturro, who's playing uh, um, Carmine Falcone. Um, if the first trailer didn't convince you that they're really kind of taking aspects of the long Halloween, this should definitely seal it right now. Um, Looks so. It looks so good. That's a funeral scene. I think it's supposed to be for the mayor, or something like that. Who I think we revealed in the trailer that uh, the Riddler kills in it. Um, and it's very, very long Halloween. Uh, like you know, a lot of callbacks on the long Halloween, which is, which is one of my I, favorite Batman titles. I can't wait for this movie to come out. Yeah. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people are still gonna bash this movie, and I think they're gonna be they're gonna be you know, eating their words or whatever. They're gonna be they're gonna regret it because I I I. I haven't been this excited about a DC movie since probably Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, it looks great. Uh, yeah. Rob Pattinson, uh, I, a lot of people complain. There's been a lot of rumors that he's been like difficult on set. Um, the only thing I've heard from, from anybody is that he's uh, it's been kind of hard getting him to bulk up. So, which, I mean, if you look at the, the, the frames for him, that's obviously true. But like we talked about before, you don't really need a big hulking Yeah, mass. Look, at, look at Michael Keaton. I know you yeah. got the biggest fan of him, the best Batman, but I like. I, I was joking. I like Michael Keaton, but I I know what you're talking about. Um, but like we said he's before, older as Batman. I mean, you know. First of all, he's wearing mostly like armor type suit anyway. And yeah. second of all, like you know, like Batman's like a ninja. He's not supposed to be like this big, like you know, like hulking. He's not supposed to be like this big as Superman. I, I've always hated when they made like you know, like Superman, and Batman, like when they're like not in their costumes, kind of interchangeable physique wise. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, and also I, they, a lot of people are calling him emo Batman because of the hair. And but I mean, like you know. They done that. They did the same thing with Christian Bale when he was a yeah. young Batman. This was supposed to be a year two Batman. It's supposed to be a young Batman. Um, I'm really warm up to the way he looks. I think he looks good. Um, Robin Pattinson as an actor is really growing on me. I've seen him in several movies. Uh, I, for, I didn't really see much from him besides the Twilight movies back in the day. Um, but since and then, that, I've, that's I've, the biggest problem with people going to be eating their words is that they're so transfixed on him being his first movie. Well, I think Harry Potter was his first movie, but his first mo- major movies. Oh, than the Harry Potter movie is Twilight. Yeah. And he hated those movies, but yeah. $20 is $20. Okay. You know, uh, all yeah. these people bashing him, get some of his money there and they can compare to him. Hate, hate is going to hate, Mike. Hate yeah. is going to hate. Um, Zoe Kravitz looks great. Um, I think they're taking a uh, If you guys read the Halloween, you know that um, in the storyline, uh, Selena Kyle's kind of like an illegitimate daughter of, uh, of Falcone. Mm-hmm. Um, you see in the picture, uh, Falcone has the scars on from when Catwoman scratched him. Um, yeah, I mean, Zoe Kravitz looks great. Um, Colin Farrell looks wonderful. Um, you can't recognize him at all. Um, he, the way he, like, you see the way he's I dressed. I thought he was in the movie. <laughs> you see the way he's dressed. Um, Oswald Cobblepot's always obviously supposed to come from a family of prestige at the Cobblepot and stuff like that, but he looks very like the almost like a black sheep, like, you know, just can't get his shit together. You see his pants like pulled up past his like you know like belt like where his suit jacket is and the suit's all frumpy. Um, yeah, it looks great. I, I think like you know they're, they're taking. I think it's it's like like a, a, a long Halloween stew mixed with parts of Seven and The Godfather, kind of thrown into a pot, and they're mixing that around, and that's what you're gonna get. It looks so good. I can't wait. And for another reason long. why I want this movie to do very well is because I want more Batman movies, and it for that to do well is that. It shows that, and I want Marvel to pay attention to this, that you can do the same uh, movie villains, but if you do it right, you can you can have them be again in the movies. Yeah. I know, like, I, I'm going to, to, to back to Spider-Man with this. I would love to see another Green Goblin in it. You know, I thought Michael Keaton was going to be the Green Goblin, but they kind of made him the Norman Oz one of that of the MCU, but yeah. uh, if, if it shows that they can do that right, then Marvel can do that with Spider-Man. They can do a they can do it in all Doc Ock. They can do another Green Goblin. I mean, I know they've done the Goblin like three times already. Yeah. Whatnot, but still, I would, 
again, you guys know that my biggest Spider-Man villain fa uh, favorite is the Goblin when they do him right. Um, so that'd be great if they could bring that back. Yeah. So, um, Marvel, pay attention. If Batman does well, you can bring back old villains again. You know? That was one my complaint my wife had when she heard who the villain was. Like, she's like, oh, the Riddler again. Why don't they use different villains something like that? Uh, I'm kind of, I mean, the Riddler's always been one of my favorite villains. I, but I, I don't, we have seen the Riddler in another movie, but I don't think we get the Riddler that I want to see anyway. Yeah. Which um I, so far we haven't seen like a full on like image of the Riddler. A lot of people are saying that guy with like the bandages and the hush mask kind of like is like is Riddler. Um, which is, if that's the case, they might be going the hush animated movie route where Hush ended up being Edward Nigma. Um, we'll see. But I mean, I, for me, I've always liked the original like Zodiac Killer um, inspired Riddler, the one who was kind of cold and calculated that type of thing. Um, and then going forward, we'll see what kind of villain. Maybe we can use like Scarface or Maxi Zeus or, or, or somebody else. I don't know, but um yeah and also they can show that they can do multiple villains and not be oh i gotta take down three villains in this movie at once yeah they're 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 some of these films seem like they're gonna be they're like i don't want to say so much background noise but they're gonna be in the background so to speak you know oh yeah i mean it's basically i mean what they're doing right now is kind of like in the long halloween where like the mobs are losing gotham to like the freaks and like you kind of see that right now where you see like you know john tutorial as uh, like you know Falcone and like you see Cobblepot there so you see them kind of like emerging right now and now you have the Riddler kind of leaving these notes where it's kind of like you know the the, the the rogues gallery is emerging right now and you kind of get to see if like you know if Batman's result is Batman's one bring the freaks out or the freaks are bringing Batman out with that and yeah. I'm very excited to see the kind of uh, direction they go in um, if you want to make a good Batman movie and a good Spider-Man movie just copy the video games yeah. that's all you gotta do honestly um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm doing with the Batman. Uh, we had one other small thing, uh, like, you know, if you weren't paying attention, uh, for me, it kind of seemed like a, you know, like a, no, like a, oh, we heard this last year type story, but, um, HBO made a, an official announcement that the Green Lantern Corpse movie is, a uh, not a movie, uh, a show is coming on HBO Max, uh, uh, it's in, in production, I think, or, or, or they just kind of said, like, oh, we're definitely doing it rather than like, you know, maybe we're doing it, but now we're definitely yeah. doing it. Um, one thing I have heard about it is that it's not going to feature either Hal Jordan or John Stewart in there. Those are two characters are off the table. Whether that means uh, Green Lantern is going to be getting a reboot or they're going to be saving him for some, some other kind of project, I don't know. Um, for me, uh, a lot of people say like, "Oh, put Kyle Rayner in there." Um, I, for me, what I would do is I would take this opportunity to kind of like you know get a more diverse uh, duo in there and put uh, Jessica Cruz and. Uh, and Simon buys in there, um, and, and this could actually even be a prequel too. You could, uh, you could put Alan Scott in there. Yeah, um, keep keep it away from you. You can even keep it away from Earth. You can keep it all the, you know, that we have, we don't have the Earthling Earth Greenlands yet. You know. Yeah, I mean it's called Green Lantern Corpse. Um, yeah. I don't I don't know if they're gonna have like you know Gnort, my my favorite Green Lantern, or like you know the guy who looks like an egg or. Uh, Kilowog. I mean, I, I don't know how much money. I mean, given the money that they're already putting into other projects, I don't know how much like they're going to put into this Green Lantern movie as far as special effects go. Uh, I think they might want a human cast. I'm not sure. Um, I'm kind of shocked that we we're not getting a John Stewart one though because we haven't really seen a live action John Stewart yet. That's why I think maybe John Stewart may be making an appearance in another movie, maybe like like yeah. uh, another Green a Green Lantern like feature movie, or maybe even like you know there's a long rumored like you know. Uh, that the Green Lantern is going to make a, an appearance in the Snyder Cut. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's going to be like that Ryan Reynolds, Hal Jordan, or another cast in Hal Listen, Jordan. I, I, this is another movie that I really did enjoy, and I, and I do understand the criticism. Of it. I I enjoy the Ryan Reynolds. I like it uh, fine. I don't think I, it was nearly as bad as people made it out to be. Just like the Daredevil movie, I, I don't I, think it was nearly as bad as people made us think it was. I think the costume's stupid. That's about it. And oh, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, the Green Lantern movie just felt like another issue of Green Lantern. It was the same time Jeff Johns was actually writing Greenland when it came out, and he did the movie. He wrote the movie, yeah. or he directed. He, did, he he played a big role in it, and I, and I can see the the flesh suit costume was dumb. That was like the dumbest thing. That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, but I think they made him too overpowered, break real quick. Yeah, they kind of rushed too much. They kind of like threw in like you know. Um, with the Sinestro corpse and like the parallax thing is yeah. all in one and the connector ham and a little too too many cooks in the kitchen with that thing. So if you see it as just another issue of a Green Lantern issue, then it, it's it's a decent movie. Yeah. That's all it, I see. What I would do is I, I would I would do buddy. I mean we we said before when they announced this, that's why I said like you know we've already heard this announcement before about Green Lantern Corpse. Um yeah. from what I heard initially 
like I think a year ago or two years ago, it was supposed to be a buddy cop, uh, buddy cop type show with uh, Hal Jordan and John Stewart. Now they're saying they're not going to be in there. So I mean, I would go the buddy cop route of uh, Jessica Cruz, uh, Simon Baz. Um, as far as actors go, I mean, I would definitely like cast some like actors who of that ethnicity. Maybe have Riza, I think Riz Ham is his name is. He played the bad guy in uh, Venom. Um, he he just yeah. a really cool. Yeah, movie. he would play a choice. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's uh, he's a Muslim actor. Uh, he just did a really cool movie. I think it was a show a movie on Amazon Prime. I think it was called The Sound of Metal, something like that. So he kind of has like that. Like Simon Baz is kind of like you know he's a really complex character and has a lot of like you know there's like a lot of insecurities about being a Green Lantern and a lot of like you know vulnerability. I think um, he would be a great choice for that. Are they even Green Lantern anymore? I I, I remember when I was to be still honest, I'm not sure they were in it, and they were decent. I liked them. But then it was just what happened with him. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know about um, Simon. I know Jessica Cruz. I think definitely is. I, I still see her in like in action figures and cartoons like that. So definitely still using her. Uh, for her, I'll probably cast somebody like Genes- Genesis Rodriguez, who was in uh, Tusk, and also mm-hmm. did the voice of uh, Honey Lemon in uh, Big Hero Six. Um, she's a uh, she's a Latino actress like that, and I think she's in her like mid thirties. So she's kind of like the same age bracket as uh, Riz or him. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think I, I'll go the Buddy Cop and and, and have those in there. Um, I think DC has plans for Hal. Honestly, I think Hal Jordan is the most boring Green Lantern anyway. Uh, I would like to see um, John Stewart uh, in a perfect world. Um, Will Smith wouldn't have been wasted in Suicide Squad because yeah. he would have the perfect. Uh, oh, I got, I got a truck going by or something. Uh, he would have been a perfect John Stewart because um, honestly, I mean, like you know, a lot of people when they think of Will Smith, they think of like the you know, Welcome to Earth type like Will Smith but like you know for me I I love him and one of my favorite Will Smith movies is Pursuit of Happiness and like he has that real like you know like Jon Stewart like you know was faced a lot of adversity like being like you know in a wheelchair and this kind of thing Will Smith has that real cool acting ability where like it it, in the face of like you know just like you know like instrumental instrumental I'm I'm trying to think of the word it faces so much adversity. He has like that, put his shin up and kind of like have like that like you know stiff upper lip like quality to him, and I, which I think would be really good. Not only is he looked the part perfectly for John Stewart, but I think he would be a great, great John Stewart. But I don't think we're. I mean, get that. if I mean they can still cast him as John Stewart, if, especially if the Snyderverse isn't going to exist anymore. And yeah. I think the Suicide Squad, the first Suicide Squad movie, is in the same is in the Snyderverse. So, I mean. You've had, I mean, look at Chris Evans. Look how many Captain America movies. I mean, look how many comic book movies he's played in. That's true. I, so. I, I, I fucking hate Suicide Squad so much because it's such a, it wastes so much potential. And this, you know, you had like, you know, we wasted Will Smith on like on, on a stupid character, didn't even act like how he did in the comics. You and had, that, like, yeah, well, that's the problem is Will Smith's like, I want to be a bad guy, but I don't want to be the bad guy. Like, I don't want to play. He's like Tom Cruise, where it's like, you know, yeah. oh, it's maybe, but not, I don't want to be a bad guy. I, I, I want to <laughs> almost be a bad guy. Yeah, it must be a Scientology thing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, yeah, the Suicide Squad, they, they didn't have a good Batman. I think David Ayer would have maybe made a good Batman movie with Ben Affleck. Because mm-hmm. the, the Batman, that is pretty good. But I mean, they, they, like people are, are like, you know, petitioning for an air cut. There is no air cut. Oh, yeah, there, there is none. There are some scenes with, with Jared Leto and Margaret Robbie, which does not make another movie. It just makes deleted scenes. And yeah. I'm telling you right now, I don't, I don't, all you people, like, you know, you can fight me. Jared Leto is the worst part of an already shitty, shitty movie. He's not the Joker in that. When I, when I first saw images of him before he, uh, the initial, when they had pictures of him doing like the killing joke camera thing, him with the green hair, I'm like, wow, he looks great. And then they released that stupid juggalo joke with the tattoos. And I'm like, what the fuck? Especially when the Joker, it made it seem like a Joker was around with Batman since day one. Yep. And my hope that that he would have been a great Joker if he was the uh, Jason, like Jason Todd became a Joker. Well, if he just played the Joker, yeah. instead of what the fuck you were doing. <laughs> and, and I think that's what killed it for me. Is it would have been so much better. Because somehow the Joker knew who uh, Bruce Wayne was, or somehow because they had that when Bruce Wayne's walking by the the, the Robin statue, where it says "ha ha ha" on a gotcha, or whatever it said, it made it seem like he would have been the perfect Jason Todd Joker. Yeah, in, in the Snyder universe, Dick Grayson's dead. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know what he was doing in that. I, I I hate that movie. So hey, here's the thing too. You know what a, a DC fan I am. I'm I'm a huge, huge DC fan. I have never seen Suicide Squad all the way through. I I always 
I get to the part where they crash in a helicopter, and I'm like, I don't, I don't care what's going on anymore. Or like, I don't know what's going on anymore. I, I don't even know who the villain is in Suicide Squad. I think it's Enchantress. I think. I think so. And like, I, I, I fall asleep every time I watch that, and I wake up at the very end. And, I, and that, that, for me, being such a DC fan and being such a champion for DC, like you know the DC EU, I, I hate that movie so much. I think it's, it's a great music video, <laughs> but it's a horrible, horrible movie. Um, hopefully James Gunn can kind of redeem the whole Suicide Squad franchise and uh, it looks like he's, he said it's not a sequel to the Suicide Squad movie it's a sequel to uh, John Ostrander's uh, comic book so if you like that like you know so that gives me hope for that movie um, yeah I think that's all I got as far as uh, news goes Mike yeah I don't got much else myself just lemonade maybe, maybe yeah. give me some lemonade uh, some, uh, some lemons uh, uh, yeah so I mean uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode um Every Tuesday we have these news uh, news recaps, and Thursdays we have the comic book review show. We're gonna try to put. I mean, uh, every, and every other Friday we have Friday night game night. Mike's uh, jump uh, really kicking off a uh, toy time uh, mm-hmm. content, which we're gonna see if we can uh, if, if, how where's the house allowance goes. We can buy some more toys. And yeah, see- that that will come out when like I'll I'll probably do some more episodes of that when uh, the next my next Neko Wave come out in November. Um, I'll probably have uh, my friend Eric come on, and we'll do. Uh, he he got a Castle Grayskull coming in the in the mail, mm. so we'll probably do something with that. Um, so, yeah, I'll I'll do an episode when I get the Transformer uh, Back to the Future X Back the Transformer X Back to the Future action figure comes out. I'll do that. Um, but I was really excited to show you guys my my the the end my trifecta my my triforce of 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 uh turtle toys you know i got the sewer set and then i got the techno drones i'm staring at it with my happiness in my pants and the big crane robot uh, can i give you a little constructive criticism though yeah feel free to play with the toys a little bit feel free to use a little imagination and uh maybe do a little a, a quick little skit with the uh the toys i mean don't be a- maybe, I, maybe i will with the the toe ground razor I I I, I, I already saw my comment. I actually comment on the video. I said, "You don't be, well, we don't play with our toys anymore." <laughs> you know? Oh, well, I my, I, I'm still working on the formula. Maybe I'll play with them. You know, I I, I was just getting over my pure excitement of of don't, never having those when I was a kid. Don't be and, shy. Uh, I I will I will say I recently did get the actual Krang. He's in he's sitting in the Krang robot right now. Um. His little uh, crane wheelchair type thing is, you know, sitting on the uh, on the corner over there. But you know, I, unlock your unlock your inner robot chicken and, and let the creative yeah. juices flow. Uh, so that's gonna do it for this week's episode, guys. Uh, um, if you guys got any suggestions, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna be trying to jumpstart some runs issues right now. I got a couple ideas for some runs. I had uh, one suggestion inside the comments. I think about doing uh, another one. I think I'm gonna do. Um, but other than that, we have plenty of content. We have a, a playlist of runs you guys can kind of check out. Yeah. Um, there's some Halloween uh, centric episodes of runs that they can kind of check out for this month. And uh, remember to like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like this. Give us a thumbs down if you say, hey, shut up. Um, either way, mm-hmm. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to it for this, this time, guys. We'll see you next time. See you guys later. Bye bye.